Hello everyone, Sapase. My name is Jimmy, and today we'll be doing a key review here on my alt. So I recently just got Keystone Master on my DPS Warrior. So now I'm trying to get um KSM on my alt, which is a a a, a DK tank. So as you see here right now, I'm reviewing my my route here. But um, one thing I didn't notice before I started here was that um, be because of the shutter affix, those hidden mobs kind of mess with the count. So the route of a plus nine will be a little bit different from a plus 10. So I didn't realize that until um, after beginning here. But uh, we'll see how we deal with it. So you, you notice the flying tears here at Gunter. So I'll take that. So when the key starts, the fly thing will also be over here, over the, the slime guy. So I take that into account. Five, Five four, four, three, three two, two, one. Okay, let's see what I do here. So here I was kind of asking my group, where did they want to go? And this is kind of a new route. I did not expect to go here. Usually I just go down the walkway. I do go down the path and pull the, the first pack there, but these guys wanted to go right. So I followed them. This was like, um, I'm kind of new to tanking. So I was just following um, the other DPS who have higher IO than me to see what they do. So I did a double pull here. It didn't seem too bad. Just moving the enemies out of stuff and uh, trying to not die. So I think the reason why they wanted to come over here was because of the, the little robots. <laughs> Shockwave. Um, here in uh, Junkyard, there are little bots that give you buffs. So you want to collect them as early as possible. As many in as Shockwave. early as possible. So I'm thinking there, there may have been a couple over here that they wanted to get. And that's why they brought me over here. So you hear here I am realizing that the guys like the 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 guy up in the air is over the the slime area, so I decided to come over here and pull these guys instead. Run. 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 Yeah, because um I don't know if you if you're new to if you haven't done junk yard before, um there's this flying bot up in the air that you want to avoid. Um, he's going to be flying over one of the boss areas. So and it, it changes every time. Just be aware which Run. boss is over and uh, decide to do that boss later. After the it moves. Every time you kill a boss, it moves Run. around. So uh, whichever boss is over, that's just the boss you're not going to do first. So over here in Bondo's yard, and basically in this area, you pull everything. Um, not all at once, obviously, but uh, over here, you just pull everything. There's a lot of dense enemies here, and they also give a lot of count. So you just take your time, pace yourself, and kill everything. These blaster mobs cannot be tanked. Um, there are range adds. And they do not hold threat. They just kind of bounce around and target random enemies. Guys, so you just bring the the melee mobs to them to, to get some uh, cleave damage going out. And one thing I'm kind of just now realizing while I'm reviewing the keys that my necro stacks are going up to 24 which is pretty bad for a blood decay because 
I heavily rely on my healing. And if I can't heal, Shockwave. I'm basically super squishy. AOE incoming. So I have to figure out how I'm going to deal with that as a as a, a blood decay. Because historically, um, blood decays have always been bad with dealing with necrotics necrotic um stacks but uh we'll see what tools we have available to us um this season with the with the legendary and the tier set i haven't gotten them yet but once they do um i hear that we can basically ignore necrotic once we get the legendary and the tier set Shockwave. AOE incoming. And so right now, this this video is mostly just a, uh, just mostly like like a a key review, not necessarily a full guide. You can kind of use it as a routing guide. For, So yeah, so this pack is pretty dangerous because you got two of those ads that just do big AoE damage to the group. So I'm popping, I'm popping a lot of things at the same time here, just trying to stay alive. And I um I don't think I remember what my IO was, what my item level was at the beginning of the key, but I'm pretty undergeared for this dungeon. So getting up to 20 stacks is something that I is definitely not good and something I should not be doing doing and need to work on. Oh wow! Shockwave. Yeah, this is this is a pretty big pack to to try to pull off without any CDs. Let's see, do I get punished for it? And I'm up to twenty one stacks. Am I gonna get punished for it? Shockwave. Okay, I finally popped my rune weapon, and I'm running, <laughs> run, run, run. Okay, looks like we. We saved it there. So this is one of uh, these two bosses dodging. is basically dodging. You're just dodging the entire fight. And um, that guy on the bike, you, you pay... Um, you kind of zoom out and make sure you're always dodging him and you have a interrupt rotation on Trixie. So this is a pug, so we don't really have like an interrupt, interrupt rotation. I'm just trying to interrupt when I notice nobody else is interrupting to, to reduce the damage. You also want to make sure you're killing these guys at the Shot same way. time if you're DPS warrior because if it's one of those bosses, if, if you kill one earlier than the other, the other guy gets a buff. So yeah, the other boss died and, and he started doing crazy damage. But he was basic, but um, then everybody popped their CDs and he was, he was dead, so. Run. So these guys aren't that bad. You just kind of have to pay attention to their... Uh, to their abilities if you interrupt if you kind of take them from granted they will smash you so but they're not that bad as long as you're paying attention so i only pull like those two at a time because they can be kind of hard for the dps to be dodging multiple blade storms and all that aoe stuff going on 
mm. at the same time as trying to to kill do damage dodge all that stuff at the same time can kind of be overwhelming to the dps if they're doing it doing it kind of staggeredly so that's why i only pull two at a time and those little guys those gunters wanna those are like free count so you want to pull them in because they're like free count they only count count as like a 0.02 percent but you know free count is free count so Make sure you get as many in as you can. And I'm realizing that guy on the that over there. I think it is it on the DPS or on a pet. I probably should have death gripped it, but I, I I'm guessing I assumed it's one of those. Gunters that fix six on random people. So yeah, this pool isn't too bad. Shot you can right double right. pull this this bully and that scrap goat in the middle there to to be a bit more effective instead of doing both of them one at a time. Yeah, you want to watch out for that cloud. If your um, if your graphic settings aren't all the way, if your graphic settings aren't set right, you could probably miss that you're in a in one of those clouds and be wondering why you're not getting healed or why this guy not getting damaged. It's because most likely you're in you're in that cloud. So on lower keys, these these enrages um, seem to not hurt that much, but I'm I'm guessing on higher keys they start hurting uh, a hell of a lot more. So you want to be careful of that. But I think on lower keys you want to be as a tank. You want to focus on that add that does the the cc that grabs that roots you because these guys do a lot of aoe damage and you do not need a root with all that aoe damage going out I'm waiting for the healer to heal up, but I'm I'm waiting for the healer to drink, but it seems like uh the healer doesn't want to, so I just keep pulling. I keep pushing. So a tip for you guys for dealing with the bullies, you may not be always be able to tell what direction they are facing. Because, you know, because you might be too zoom zoomed out or whatever craziness you're doing. All you have to do is just look at the floor. You don't have to necessarily see what direction they're looking at. Just look at the floor. And Incoming. generally you'll see that the direction the effect is going and be able to dodge it. And one thing you notice that I'm doing here as a tank is that I'm standing right on that conduit, that uh, electrical conduit. I'm standing right on it so that so that when the boss does his electricity AOE, I'm already on it and I don't have to worry about moving around to get that debuff off of me. Yeah, I'm just trying to stay alive because I'm like Absolutely. 10 item levels under everybody Thank else you. for this for this dungeon. And the healer is having a hard time healing me up because I'm so undergeared. But, but we make it work. We make it work. 
people are so desperate and that's why you should play a tank or a healer because um people are so desperate to, to find a tank or a healer that they're willing to play with someone 15 um 15 idol levels under geared just so that they can get the key done because there, there's not enough tanks out there so you want you want to get into to groups into keys play a tank and a healer this would never happen on my on my warrior or my or my warlock alt getting into a key this this much under geared compared to everyone else that wouldn't happen they kind of want you to over gear everything in pugs but as a tank you can get away with getting a bit under geared So you see, let me pause the video uh, so you guys can see it. Oh, let me go back a little bit. That right there, that's one of those bots that I'm talking about. So um, in your roots, whether it's the one that you made for yourself or one that you're following from, from online, such as Dreadnose Roots, you want to try to maximize your DPS getting as many shock bots as possible. So that's the thing. So if you see one of these, maybe point out to your DPS, hey, this is bot here, click on it, it'll give you a buff so that um, the dungeon will go a lot smoother. They'll do, do more damage. Um, I feel like the shock bot is the most important one because it, it greatly increases your damage. So if whenever you, you notice your DPS doesn't have one, always point it point them out to them because they might not be aware of the mechanic if they're also new to, to the game that bot over here is not a shock bot but it's still a buff you can take or available to your to your group it's the the blue ones that you really want because that's dps Yeah, those, uh, I forgot what I'm called, but those guys are, those guys do not play around. They will rip your range and your healer apart. So yeah, I, I decided to take it because it looks like all my other group members had one. So this, so these ads, I feel like if you're comfortable and right. with your group's DPS or if you have the, the right cooldowns, you can definitely pull one of those slimes and an elemental to it to be a little bit more effective. Instead of having to do, deal with three elementals at the same time over here, you can no, pull one elemental no. over here and that way you're only doing, you're dealing with two elementals and not in three in this pack there's also a, a one of those lanky boys over there you could put in i think the yeah that guy just pulled them over here so thinking about about how you divide your pools is is important because you want to spread out Gonna make sure you have your enough defensive cooldowns to survive, but also that your group has the offensive cool the necessary offensive cooldowns to deal the damage to actually kill them. So that you notice my warrior cooldown is on cooldown. My mage just popped his combust. So we have a lot of damage going out right now, so we can pull big. Charging. Charging. Move. But I think I didn't really realize that while I was, um, it's kind of really hard to realize that or calculate that while you're tanking live. Cause you, you already have so many things going on in your mind. 
especially if you're new to tanking like I am, keeping track of that mid key is something that I'm going to have to work on. Interrupt. Oh, and there's another one of those shock bots. So being aware of where they are so you can point them out to your to your group so that they can do more damage is very useful. Run. Run. Oh, I just noticed that my that I have two uh damage details up, which is strange. One is supposed to be healing and one's supposed to be damage. Yeah, so there I kind of went crazy. Did a really big pull. Interrupt. Charging. Move. If you guys are wondering what add-on this is, this is, I believe, Omni CD. It allows you to track, you know, party or party cooldowns. So you choose what, what, Charging. what Charging. abilities you want to track or what cooldowns you want to track, and it lists them right here next to your uh, next to their frames. Um, if you don't know what abilities you should track or should not track, all you have to do as a new player is just look up to copy somebody else's profile. Um, the add-on allows profile, so you just have to find, you know, a player's profile online that you like and copy yeah. their profile. They'll usually post it in their description or maybe on Wago IO. You'll find one there. Just copy it and paste it into the to the add-ons profiles, and you and it'll look like this. Well, not like this. It'll look like whoever's. Um, UI you want it to look like. So this boss is all about movement so as long as you stay in those circles and you manage to quickly um clear out the 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 goops when those bot gets gooped it should be an easy boss it does do a lot of damage but um it is a boss that deals a lot of damage, especially on tyrannical weeks. Special, Special coming. But mechanically, it's easy. You just have to survive. That's the hard part is surviving, not the mechanics themselves. But one thing to note, if you are a DPS, a ranged DPS, you can stand all the, you can outrange all the goop Watch abilities. Um, uh, I'll show you where it is after this, but you can basically, there's a spot you can stand and just outrange all the abilities and not have to worry about it. It's right here. So you can stay on this ramp as a ranged DPS and never have to worry about dodging anything or standing dodging or standing in anything you just stand over here and do dps uh is there anything else i want to say yeah so if you're if your abilities have that range i'd recommend just standing there and whenever he does his abilities just go up the ramp a little bit and then you come back down and start dpsing so it's a lot less movement than trying to go around those circles as a trying to go around in a circle and hard cast at the same time. Shop you can ready. just stand there. A little extra tip there. Shock ready.
So this, I believe, is... Actually, I don't know how I survived that. Um, I think this is... This is one of those situations where basically the healer carried me as a tank. Because everyone else was severely overgeared. I was like 15 levels undergeared compared to everyone else. But as a tank, you can get away with that. As long as you know the, the route, the basic route and the mechanics, um, you can get away with um, being a little bit undergeared. Shockwave. Shockwave. Uh, so I just noticed that I'm a bit short. So that's what this this number here. That's a, a reminder of percentage uh, before I leave the area. So I got these extra mobs. Make sure we hit 100%. And then we kill the boss. This boss is actually pretty easy. Well, on lower levels, this boss is not that bad. You kind of just have to dodge stuff. Um, the first ad that you see here, you just kind of focus on dodging stuff. Um, so if you have a two minute cooldown or one minute or two minute cooldown. All you have to do is kind of burst this gown kind of fast. And then on phase two, you, you go up one on either to the left or to the right. And uh, you have to go up the tower and Stay dodge a bunch of stuff. Well, you're, you'll see it. But yeah, this phase is basically about um, the dps and healers dodging stuff and you just trying to stay alive from the damage stay away from lines. so while they burst this guy down you just focus on moving him into proper stay positioning so it's easy for your group to dodge everything else so i see Things here that change. the side you go up to is the side that he's shooting that lightning chain to so that's how you know what side you're going up. So, yeah, you're just dodging the lightning, dodging the red circles. So, you, you know, you don't get sent all the way back. You get hit, you get sent back. So you got to take your time and do it right rather than rush. Which I got hit here a couple of times. Because I was trying to rush and be impatient. Usually on my warrior, I just heroic leap up here. Yeah, so you get up here, you click on that thing to drain the batteries, and then you get down here and kill the boss. You lust, kill the boss. Everybody do as much damage as they can to one phase him. Or else you'll have to do it all over again. Uh, it's like the the warrior got a, a mecha gun ring. That's dope. So there, that was my, uh, I believe my first junk, Junkyard 9. 
and I two chested it. So um, you can kind of use that route as a as a this video as a guide on what route to take and how to deal with those mobs. Anyway, thank you guys for hanging out with me, and see you guys later.